Uh, thanks to Frostcom for inviting me. It's great to be here, and it's great that so many people came. So I will be, as they said, I will be talking about Open Nebula. Uh, my intention is just to answer these questions, like what is Open Nebula exactly? How can it help you build your own cloud? From this first structural level, of course. How can it help you to operate it? And how can it help you as well? Or what features does it bring to, so that you can integrate it in your existing virtualized environment already or that you can build on top of it? So what is up in Nebula? In, in, in four words, it's a full cloud infrastructure solution. What does it mean? It means that it tries to get all this mess together working together and working fine, hopefully in a reliable, efficiently, scalable way. That means that we will, able to, we will be able to manage all these things sort of easily and that we can sort of grow our infrastructure as much as we want. We have some tests that said at least 10,000 10, virtual machines have been tested in Open Nebula a while ago already. So uh, it, it, it escapes well from what we from what we hear we developed this uh, software under some principles the first one is that it's fully open source and that apache 2 license not open core we we think that it's very important that it's flexible and adaptable it comes from the from realizing that every environment is unique so when you make something uh, rather than forcing the environment to adapt to your tool, you should provide the means that your tool can be adapted to every environment which is without much work. And uh, of course, uh, we, we don't want people getting locked in, and that's why we try to support uh, as many solutions and drivers and to make it easy to just uh, create uh, more drivers just so you can adapt and move easily and migrate easily between different uh, infrastructures or hypervisors. We have more principles, but who get about the principles? Let's just talk the important things. So we're getting this sorted out. Um, when we want to build the cloud, we want to take, uh, <clears throat> in the first place, we want to see how we put together the infrastructure. So as a, those some things here doesn't matter. This is what we're going to look at now. So the first thing that we have is a set of physical hosts on which we will end up running the virtual machines. So in order to virtualize on those hosts, we can have many hypervisors. The ones that you see here is the ones that are supported in Open Nebula. The four ones on the top come, come in the box. The other ones can be found in the ecosystem, which is the place where we put external contributions to the, to the project. Um, we aim to give uh, VMware is the first one, not because VMware is super cool, but because we aim to give the best support to virtualization on VMware without having to pay all these VMware uh, specific cloud solutions, which are really, really expensive. Of course, we support KVM Shin and uh, Amazon Cloud, if you have host in, in Amazon, you can also add them to Open Nebula, so you can see them, you can operate with them, and you can actually deploy uh, your virtual machines from Amazon to those hosts by using Open Nebula. In, when you're using Isidus, we would say that you're creating a hybrid cloud because you have your own host, which are, are now part of your infrastructure, but you can also take um, part of the infrastructure which is in a public cloud provider like Amazon. Uh, that set of the hypervisors, we also need to monitor the host to know basically how much memory they have and how much memory is free, so, so to know how many things we can put on them and to know how many CPUs they have and how much are they using them. So we provide a set of scripts for each of the hypervisors that you've seen before and you can also integrate with Ganglia out of the box. And I would say this for every component, you can always write your own um, driver, not very difficultly, or to hack the ones that come so it, it just fixes your environment. Um, the networking on the host, uh, 
This is basically uh, a specifying which uh, networking solution we're, we're going to adopt. Networking understood as uh, which networks the virtual machines are going to be attached to and how these networks are going to be isolated from each other. For example, you will want your virtual machine to be able to communicate with other virtual machines in the same network, in the same virtual network, but not with virtual machines or hosts or other machines which are in different networks. So you can uh, actually uh, define for every host one of the uh, networking uh, solutions that are listed here. It is important to say that, uh, for example, the 102.1Q Open Nebula takes care of creating bridges dynamically, of uh, attaching interfaces dynamically, so it's very easy to configure. So basically, when a virtual machine is going to deploy it on a host, it's going to be given a, an IP that, you, that has been fetched from, from the pool of IPs. I will talk about that later. And then networking for that uh, virtual network on that host is going to be set up uh, through one of these mechanisms. And Open Nebula will take care of creating the EB tables rules or the IP tables rules. This one will provide no isolation. Or the VMware, uh, again, a specific network uh, things. And, and, and basically connect the host to the network. That set up a host. That's the three things you needed to 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 set up a host in Open Nebula: uh, a virtualization solution, information, and networking. Uh, you also needed to set up uh, a storage. That is uh, basically where you're gonna store the images that you're going to use to 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 create your virtual machines. And well, typically uh, we call these data stores, and data store, as you can reach, is an storage medium. So a data store can be a server somewhere that just has the images and export them through eSCSI, or can be just a file system where the Open Nebula uh, front end is running and the images will just be stored there. We have several types of data stores just to match any solution. So you can create a data store according to your needs, and then each data store has a transfer driver. Um, some of the transfer drivers are of course, uh, pretty much linked with the type of data store. But for example, if you have a system data, uh, a file system data store, that means that the images are a normal file system that can be fetched from them, and the transfer driver indicates how these images are going to be placed in the host where the virtual machine is deployed in the end. So there are several ways of doing this. You can basically ACP the image to the host so it can be used there for, with the virtual machine, or if you have a, a set up a shared file system, you can use the shared driver. We also provide VMware specific method and QCAL. Um, there's a special type of uh, data store, which is the system data store. The system data store basically uh, has the images that are running at the moment on virtual machines, so they can be managed from them. They're, they're centralized in this place, and then they're taken, taken to the host. Talking about images, how do we define an image? We put it in a data store. Uh, we indicate the type, if it's the operating system, or we want to read only image, or we just want raw data. So we, we give him raw data, or we, we tell him to create, uh, to format a disk with so many megabytes and uh, the format of our choice. We indicate where the image is. Is it in our file system? Or we can indicate an HTTP address, and it gets downloaded from there or if, if we are using the user interfaces or the OCCI interface, we can actually upload the image to, to Open Nebula to be used from there. And uh, yeah, we can indicate if it's persistent or not persistent. Persistent means that the changes uh, are kept, like you launch a virtual machine with the image, then the virtual machine does things, then the virtual machine dies or is shut down, and then the image keeps the changes. Non-persistent means that the image is cloned, and then whatever the virtual machine does on it will, not, will be lost when the virtual machine dies. There are some other several options when defining images, like uh, the device is going to get attached to, etc. But they're not so important. And the uh, networking, virtual networks. 
Um, when we define a virtual network, we mean that we're defining a set of leases, and leases are basically IPs, like I have these IPs from this one to this one, or I have this network with this NESMAC of IPs, or I have this specific IP which is point 113, point 115, and point 0.3. And with this, we define a virtual network. When we deploy a virtual machine, we, we, we will say, okay, I want you to be on this virtual network. And before deploying, Open Nebula will say, okay, we have so many leases free on this virtual network, so I'm going to assign this lease, this IP, to this virtual machine. Unless you say otherwise, there's a MAC address generated from the IP that you chose, and this MAC address is assigned to the, to the network interface of the virtual machine. This is useful uh, to know instantly from inside the virtual machine which is the IP that Open Nebula will have it assigned in the virtual network. That way you can uh, run what we will call context scripts or other things to, to set up the networking inside the virtual machine very easily because you have the Mac present at the, at the very beginning. Of course, uh, there are other ways to do this like uh, having a DH, uh, DHCP server giving virtual machines IPs according to, to the MAC, etc., etc., And you can always force the MAC that you want and the IP that you want. But the idea is this. So we, we have a list of hosts, we have list of data stores, we have list of images and data stores, and we have a, a list of, of virtual networks that you can use. And this is basically all we need to, to create a virtual machine template. What we do in a virtual machine template is just to get, okay, this virtual machine is going to be attached to these networks, it's going to be attached to these images. We put some other options there, like the memory should be able to take, like the CPU should be able to use, like if we want to have uh, VNC sessions enabled in it. We put the context, which is the way of Open Nebula of, of of placing some files and some scripts which are useful inside the virtual machine, like the networking scripts. This is uh, also provided by Open Nebula. And with that, we form a virtual machine template that we can instantiate as, as many times as we want, and then virtual machines are created, uh, and eventually deployed to the host where they best fit by the Open Nebula scheduler. So uh, that's it basically for the part of the infrastructure. Uh, do you have any questions so far about this? That's good. Either I'm very good or very bad. Explain. Oh yeah. Of course you can re uh, perform all sorts of operations on your virtual machines. Perhaps the most interesting ones are that if your environment is supported and you have properly configured, you can live migrate. In the last version, you can also uh, hot plug disks to virtual machines which are already running, which is a very exciting feature. And there's another hot plugging features like uh, changing memory and hot plugging virtual networks that will be coming up in future releases. Uh, so we have our cloud set up, all the infrastructure, right? It is connected. And how do, how do I operate on this cloud? How do I perform all these things? Who, who can do this? How I keep track of, of what's going on? And basically, uh, we're going to take care of, of the other parts that you see here. So, but, yeah. Open Nebula has users. You can define several users. And basically, this is very much Unix-like. So you have some users, and these users uh, can have quotas. You can say how many virtual machines the user can, can launch maximum, how many uh, space can, can they use in a data store. You can say how many leases of a virtual network they can take. And everything that they do is saved for accounting. This accounting interface can be queried, and you can ask, OK, give me the amount of CPU that this user has used during this date and this state very easily, especially from the last version in which we rewrote this part. And you can say it, uh, each user have associated an uh, authentication driver, so you can use several methods to authenticate the users. The core method would be the regular username, password, 
method, but you can also use SSH keys to L LADP and certificates, X509 certificates. Or if, if you have a, another way to, to do authentication in your system, you can also write your custom driver, which is basically and a script which gets given a username and the password or some parameters that you would be the one who takes care of checking that this is, this is correct. Each user belongs to a group. So the groups of users are uh, the same regarding quotas and accounting. You can define quotas per group and the accounting is saved and you can query it per group as well. And then all the resources that we saw before have themselves uh, an owner and a group, just like if it was a file in, 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 in Unix, and a set of permissions that can be used, managed, or admin. So basically, you can tick where you want the, the, the group of the user to use, manage, admin their resources, etc., etc. You can play with permissions just like you play with permissions with files. And we have uh, access control list. Access control list are just rules in the studies that you see written there. It's just a way to express or to express more permissions in the system, like to say the group of testers can uh, deploy virtual machines or can deploy instantiate templates that were created by a different group, or this user can do so many things with, with other resources that belong to different groups. So this is very this is very flexible when 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 you have a set of groups doing different things that you don't want no one uh, doing more than than he should or breaking things. In order to operate with with all of this, we have a common line interface, uh, very nice. All the comments are I find they kind of. Uh, easy and they're all very regular, they have the same options, etc, etc. They put a nice printout in the console, they produce also raw XML in case you're doing processing somewhere else. Common Lightning is, is nice, but we have also a user web-based user interface. Uh, Openavila Sandstone is a fully featured interface. We will say uh, typically this is the interface for administrators because it has everything. You can, you can manage everything that I told you about from this. Users, quotas, etc., etc. You get the nice uh, graphics and how many resources you're using, how many of your virtual machines have failed or are suspended, etc., etc. You get the nice wizards to create your virtual networks, to create your templates. Very easy. And of course, if you log in with a user that doesn't have permissions to, to create hosts, for example, if you, if you be log in with a user which is not the one admin group, which is like the root group for OpenEvila, then there will be things which are not visible for that user. They just disappear and he cannot operate, he cannot operate with them. But still, we will, see, we will we say this is an administration interface because we have another one which is oriented towards the final user. And this interface is much simpler. It has a lot of, I mean, not a lot, but a bit of text explaining like this is what you do in this tab. This is how do you deploy a virtual machine. It has helps everywhere. So, and, and, and of course, with this interface, you cannot manage the, the physical host, you cannot manage the data store, you can just use, uh, make use of the virtual infrastructure that is uploading images, uh, creating virtual networks, and launching virtual machines with it. You cannot even as specify how much memory you want, this is giving you what the administrator will give you a choice of the virtual machine, like a small, medium, or big. And uh, of course, it's also very easy to change all this text and to change the logo and everything, because we thought it would be nice, like if you're a vendor or an enterprise that you're offering your service to public users, you could you want to put your own logo and, and make it like if if you actually had this interface made. More is that we support the Amazon uh, API and the OCTI API. So you can, uh, we also provide the tools to interact with this, with this interface so that you can, you can connect other, other external tools that are actually made for the, for these interfaces. Now, 
the last part will be uh, what do you do to integrate your cloud. What you see here is a is an schema, a graphic of how of the architecture of OpenNebula. So basically, you have the OpenNebula code. This is C++, and this is like the the very core of it. Uh, normally, you don't want to touch that, but everything around it like network, authentication, storage, images, virtualization, monitoring, everything around it are scripts. So let's say you need a special authentication. You put your own script. You can create your own script. Let's say you have some sort of special storage that is not supported by default. You can take the existing script, hack it, and then, and then it's there. You, you just have to configure it. You don't have to, to go and read through the source code, how this is working inside, how do and this is done, then to hack it, then to recompile it, and then hope everything is fine. No. You just create your own script, look how the other scripts are done, but this is very easy. I mean, they're quite simple. They are made in Ruby, or they are made in, in, in shared scripts. You create it, you place it in the configuration, and then you just use it. If you need a special script when you create a host, you just indicate that you want to use this special script, and then your script will be used. And everything is like that with all these things. My SQL, SQLit, and, and of course, uh, we have several APIs. OCA means Open Nebula Cloud API. So it's just an API so that you can pro programmatically operate on Open Nebula with Ruby, with Java, with Python if you use the one from the ecosystem or directly talking to the XML RPC API. This is the drivers as, as, and plugins I was telling you about. Easy to write, easy to tweak. And uh, normally I will end up the talk there. But since it is here, I have a little bit more time, actually a lot. Uh, there are some other cool things that come with Open Nebula. Uh, some are old and some are new. But they're quite characteristic uh, of us. The first thing is what we call uh, hooks, core tuning. This is, again, a scripts that you can create. We provide already some, which are very useful. But it's scripts that you can create and that get triggered, called at a specific moment. So you can have your own script getting called uh, when a host goes to error mode because something happened uh, to an error state because something happened to that, to that host. You can have an, a script that then gets called and then tells OpenNebula that OpenNebula should redeploy all the virtual machines that were on that host somewhere else. Very important for fault tolerance. But of course, um, you can do that for host and you can do also for virtual machines. Like if I have to do some extra operation when a virtual machine is shut down, then you can use your own script. Put it in the configuration file, it gets called automatically. You have not had to read the source code again or to go through the virtual machine state graph or anything like that. Um, Hooks can be local or remote. Local means they're executed in the front end of Open Nebula. Remote means that they can be executed on the, directly on the host where the virtual machine is running. Open Nebula zones. This is, I mean, I'm amazed by this. Every time I see it, I'm very happy to tell about it. Uh, I was saying that you can have how to set up Open Nebula, but sometimes you have you can set up not one open nebula, but maybe two or maybe three if you have enough infrastructure for it. And what open nebula or zones allows you to do is to have uh, an overview of all your deployments of open nebula in one single place. In one single place, which is a user interface, which is a command line interface, and which is a Ruby API as well. So what you can do with OZONES basically is get a listing of all the resources that mean hosts, virtual networks, blah, 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 that are uh, available on your different Open Nebula zones, but also create virtual data centers. Virtual data centers is the word what we, that we use for a set of hosts, virtual networks, and data stores which are grouped together and which are um, administered by a special user, we will call it the virtual data center administrator user, which belongs to a virtual data center special group. So basically with Open Nebula at zones, 
you can, in a couple of clicks, say I want this host, these three hosts, these two virtual networks and these data stores in a virtual data center. I want the administrator user to be this one. Okay, Open Nebula of Zones, we go to the deployment of, the, of Open Nebula, we create a user, we create a group, we create uh, the access control list rules so that uh, this user can manage and use the resources that you indicated. And we'll, we'll just create it so, so that you can tell someone in your company or your infrastructure, like, okay, I, I assigned these resources to you and your group. You can now log into this Open Nebula zone and you can do what you want with them, but he will only be able to see what, what you chose. Uh, there are some, some redirections set up as well so that uh, the people don't have to connect directly to the front end of Open Nebula, they just have to connect to connect to where the place the Ozone server is running and they get redirected and it works for the Sandstone interface, the self-service interface and the command line interface. These are made by Apache, rewrite rules, etc. We have a marketplace, it's just like uh, Google Play. We had a long discussion on how to name this, like Open Nebula Play, no? But um, it basically is a place where people can upload their appliances, that it, their images that are going to be used in virtual machines, and then other people can download them. It's integrated in Open Nebula Sandstone, so you have there a tab, and you see these images here on, on the website, and you can click just uh, uh, import this image from Marketplace and Open Nebula sounds that will take care of downloading it and adding you as, as, this, as if this image was yours. Uh, we also have sandboxes and these are images with Open Nebula pre-installed and everything that you need so that you can run it on KVM and VMware and basically do tests with Open Nebula and see how it works, get it run so you don't have to, to go through the install process which is not so difficult but well, some people prefer to do a couple of clicks and there you are in an environment which, in which everything is set up. And we also have a, a demonstration public cloud, which is a dummy cloud. It means that uh, people can, can use any of our interfaces to log in and launch virtual machines and do what they want and test the interface, but nothing happens in reality. We, we went over 1,000 users a while ago already, and you can, it's very simple to request an account on our website so that you can directly make use of the Open Nebula interfaces, and then you can see all the options are available to you as well. The only problem in Sandstone, since you're not the administrator user, you will not able to, uh, to do some things, but I think it's, it's tweaked so you can do as much as, as possible. Of course, you cannot manage users uh, if you're a, an unprivileged user there. We also have an ecosystem. I told you before, this is the place where, where people can make contributions to the project that we don't have the, the time nor the resources to maintain ourselves. These are some, some contributions that have been made uh, a long time. Some of them are more updated than others. 